Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I've got a Peugeot Boxer van here and it's got a fault code of a P20E8. And what that means is that the urea fluid pressure is too low. Now we've got the live data up here. We've got the vehicle already. I've had a little revs here for a few minutes. And we're not getting above four bar. And that needs to go to six bar. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna change the AdBlue tank. Okay, so just here we have a replacement AdBlue tank from the customer has supplied. And we shall now get this fitted to the vehicle. You can see that the tank comes, everything's all built into it. So you've got the pump um, and all of the bits and pieces. You've got a heater in there, everything like that. It's all, all, so all sort of built in. So when you get a problem, you just have to replace the whole complete tank. Now, from looking at that, I know some of you might say, which I'm questioning myself, is why do we need to buy the whole tank when it looks like this can be unscrewed? Um, there isn't anywhere that sells the pump separately, so we have got the complete tank here to change. Now, I've probably diagnosed at least 50 of these vans so far with an AdBlue tank, but this is the first person who has come back and wants me to actually change the tank itself. I think a lot of people go for a different sort of option, if you know what I mean. Okay, so if I come under the vehicle here, we've got the tank right here. And if we look under here, we've got what looks like four 10 millimeter bolts. So it shouldn't be too difficult of a job to do. A couple over there. Uh, of course, there's gonna be pipes here to disconnect, which is like a giant fuel hose there. Uh, another one up the top there. So we'll try and get this disconnected and programmed back in once we fitted the new one. So I've got two little clips here that I've just used a little pry tool to release. Okay, so I'm just in the process of opening these bolts. Now I did say 10 millimeter earlier, but my eyes are not as good as they used to be because these are 13 millimeter bolts. So we'll get that out. We've got one, two, three out now. We'll get the last one out here. That's the last bolt out. Now we can wiggle it down a little bit and get these uh, hose lines here disconnected. Just need to squeeze those together and pull it out. So before we disconnect those, I have noticed that we did have some pipes over here. Just disconnected that electrical plug and another hose line there. It just connects in there. We've disconnected that from that side. Now we've got the large holes here disconnected. We've just got one more here to disconnect. And then just over here, we have another plug here. So that's both of the, well, fuel lines or whatever you like to call them, disconnected. Both of the uh, power supply circuits, they're disconnected. And that's disconnected there from the middle as well. It separates right there in the middle. Okay, so that's it, I've got it out. And what I've done is I've just laid flat under, under the van so it's let, resting on my legs while I was disconnecting the pipes uh, just so you don't pull anything or put too much stress on the wires there. And surprisingly, I managed to get this out without any sort of spillages. Um, and it is full, it's heavy, it is full. It's full of fluid, so I've just kept this end tilted upwards so we don't get fluid coming out here. Okay, let's get the new tank in. So this is going to be a little bit easier because it is empty. There is no weight in it. What I could have done before I, before I take that out, I suppose, I just couldn't be bothered. You can just open the drain flap there, drain the, the AdBlue out just to make the tank lighter before you uh, get it down. But I was pretty confident I was able to just get it down without covering myself in uh, AdBlue fluid. Okay, so that's the new tank all fitted in. All of the clips back in the same order that we've taken them out. Plugs all back in order. So now we can just get the AdBlue tank refilled. So just here where the fuel filler cap is, we have the AdBlue reservoir. Okay, now we're gonna fill that up. I got a little bit confused there what to call that AdBlue reservoir filler cap, I suppose. You get confused to, to call it like a fuel cap, fuel hoses, which are, I don't know, AdBlue cap, AdBlue hoses, whatever you like to call them. We're gonna get this fluid hair in. Again, this was supplied by the customer. Okay, that's the AdBlue all filled up. 
Okay, now, before I diagnosed this, I did reset the whole system and tell her that it's, it's had a new tank, etc. Just so he could drive home and come back to me. Uh, he's not from too far away, he's only from somewhere over the road there, I think it was Bedford or something. Um, so, we haven't got the fault back right away. Now, what I did do with the old tank is to temporarily sort of get it working. It doesn't always work, but uh, go to the bottom base of the tank, give it a few taps, and sometimes you can temporarily get them working. So what we're going to do now, we're going to hold up the revs again like we've done in the first in the first uh, place when we were testing the original tank. We're going to hold up the revs and we'll go back to the live data again. And what we should see is that pressure rising up. Hopefully this is still live. We'll click on that as well. We'll check on the bleed status. So it's on standby at the minute. It's going to hold the revs above above sort of 2,000 rpm, 2,500 rpm, anywhere between 2,500 to 3,000 rpm. A couple of minutes, and that should change to pressurising, and then we should see that go up to six millibar. There you go. You can see now that it's jumped up. Sorry, let that screen focus. See it's jumped up to around about six millibars there, or bar, sorry. Okay, like I said, we were already clearing codes and resetting the special functions before we started, so we're just gonna check again, make sure we haven't got the codes. And we will, again, just in case it doesn't confuse anything, we'll do it again now, we'll do the spare part, emissions control, and we will do a replacement of the additive reservoir. Now, hang on a minute. There is two tanks on these now, I need to make sure I'm not getting confused. One of these tanks is an Eli's tank and one is the pad fluid. Now you can see there I quickly pressed that a little bit too quick without reading it. The Denox system reservoir, so that's the AdBlue tank there. Okay, now asking me to switch off the ignition and wait for 30 seconds, so we'll do that. And this scan tool is the Launch EuroTab 3. It's available at launchtech.co.uk. I do get people talk to me about trying to use something you know that I don't have to use so much of my hands now. I've, I've purchased one of these GoPros, but I don't know. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure I like it at the minute. I've just uh, temporarily switch back to using my phone. And back to the job. We can see the reinitialization is successful there of the tank. Now, what I like to do, you don't have to do it. Just just to avoid the customer having any more issues you know because once the denox system has been emptied it can mess up all of the calculations of the denox system the catalyzer uh, so let's just what happened there condition not satisfied it's probably because we've already done one it doesn't let you do another one straight away yeah okay so what we've done we've just exited the special functions and then came back in and now it's allowing us to replace the particle filter or sorry the um catalyst Denox catalyst system. Okay, switch the ignition back on. We've done that. That's successful. Now the reason why I do that, I don't want the customer driving away, get on his way home, and then he gets a warning light back on uh, to say he's still got a problem with his Denox system. We come back and check it, and then it'll probably say something like, "Your catalyst has reached its thermal agent and it needs to be replaced." So that will avoid that happening. Now we did also have a couple of other codes: the P20EE NOx exceedance. Um, but hopefully that should all now be no more uh, what have we got I don't know what that code is but I'm not really interested in that so that's the only code that we've got left ok so we'll just make sure that we're all clear to come down off the ramps so that's it one AdBlue tank all fitted and uh, pressurised up at the right pressure there 6, milli six bar I've been doing, doing DPFs for too long I keep saying millibars and calling the catalyst a particle filter, but yeah, that's it. Add blue tank fitted, catalyst is all working as it should be now. We've got six bar of pressure from the tank itself, from the urea tank. So that's it, we are all finished, and I will see you on the next video.